For the first time in three years, I'm covering Parry Tour because the finish to this race was very interesting with America coming out on top, baby. This is quite an old race. It used to be very prestigious. It still is. It used to be a World Tour race, Parry Tour. 214 Ks with the combination of gravel roads through farming area with these little punchy hills. Really nice parkour. DeMar's been very good here as well as Sturvin. And it was on the same day as the Gravel Worlds or the same weekend. So DeMar was here for Arkea Sanzig. And you've got these sectors, just like in Paris Roubaix. In the break, Aski Delacroix, Ross Goff, Jeanne and Narbon into Marche with Petit on the front, who's good in Roubaix, pacing for Bini, Trek going for Turns or Sturvin, Oliveira attacking for UAE. Yeah, didn't Petit like, have a hole in his butt from one of the Grand Tours? But there's crashes. You want to be at the front. You want to stay safe in these sectors because there's splits all over the place. Really easy to get punctures. Uh, you can run wide in the corners. I don't know if Dali crashed, where uh, Zelly crashed, or what a puncture. He's As he's coming back, Campanart's attacks off the front of the peloton, and he's marked by Israel Premier Tech, who are outstanding as a team in this race. Reisberg going with him. He's got the 38 centimeter bars. Uh, he's got the levers turned in like all young bucks these days. And so Total and Tomashe bring it back. And there's a bridge attempt, serious one too, uh, with Askey dropping his breakaway companions with 44 Ks to go as the hills uh, really start to come thick and fast. They don't see him again. This was a nasty move. Degenkolb, who was looked at outstanding at Paris Bay before he got crashed. Tiller, who's also a big unit. I really like him. Lagax tacked onto the back of it too, and Cabernet. So a lot of the teams, the strong ones, are represented now, including Intermarche with Turnison. Panic stations for Jumbo Visma, who had the pre race favourite, Christophe Laporte, in the Euro Champs jersey, uh, either behind Per Strand or there was Lars Boven there. Uh, so they didn't have, they had Dylan Van Bala, but not like an eight man, you know, stacked classics team for Jumbo. They got to react on that move. It's brought back. EF had also missed it, but I thought that move really could have gone all the way. Obviously, the race hadn't been hard enough to that point. Counter attacks come. Unix always wanting to be represented. And look at uh, FDJ. Allez le bleu. 1, 2, 3, 3 FDJ. They got a man up front. They're tagging on to moves. They were outstanding in this race. Really, yeah, just bossing it. Legax a really nice rider. I like him. And without... Uh, Stefan Kung, I don't think, was in the race either. It was some of the young guys. Zambala trying to create a split. Askey's gone clear. And the gravel section's at the end of these punchy climbs. And so that's a really hard one. Here's Sector 3, and Tiller launches it. He creates a split, in fact. And Arkea were getting really worked over. Tiller's just nose-breathing. And maybe johannesson has got to let his wheel go at this point. Who's that IPT rider? I think that's Sheehan. So Sheehan was going with the big boys, Laporte, Legac, and Tiller on the climbs into these gravel sections. Really, really strong performance from him. And I thought this move was going to go until, and Binny's chasing, but it's just him chasing and a lot of other teams like Trek were represented until I see Tiller going clear. Oh, why would Tiller attack with 25 k's to go? It turns out, as you see Van Bala pointing to his rear wheel and he's not pulling through to help Arkea chase, who are going for Demar. Christoph the door had a puncture. This man's addicted to punctures. Needs to sort out his puncture addiction. Peru Bay twice he punctured while Van Aert too. And so Tiller's kind of like, ah, I'll, I'll not, I'm not going to ride 25k solo, especially though a minute behind the break. Here's the move. Riley Sheehan anticipates off that regroupment when Tiller's brought back into the second last uh, Shaman sector, and he goes. Tiller looks over at Johannesson, I think, to close it. Laporte's just making his way back in this sector to the peloton. And Lagax tagged onto it. Great from FDJ. You know X and R represented. They're not going to help. They're tagging. They're marking Dylan Van Bala. So it's Intermarche and Yumbo. And this always interests me, interests me in these sort of uh, moments in races in classics. Laporte tries to attack across. Doesn't work. Turnison doesn't pull. Bini tries to attack across. Doesn't work. Chasse Patats. Van Bala also tries to get onto Bini. And I guess. You'd think if, if Van Bala gets to, with Bini, uh, can he get across this group? But uh, the four were working really well. Oh, no, sorry, the three. Lagak wasn't pulling because Aski was ahead, obviously. And then Uno X uh, mark it out. And the peloton still doesn't get a chase ready 11 seconds behind. They were just too close, I guess. Aski's on the Côte de Roche-Corbon. And Lagak attacks out of that uh, breakaway. And I think this is the right thing to do. 
Askey is not going to survive to the finish with that sort of slender lead. He's been in the breakaway. Lagak can get separation across to him, and they just got to up the tempo to not be caught by uh, Turnison and more Israel riders behind. So I think it's perfectly fine what Lagak does. It's not like he, he's not towing them across. He gaps them. And in fact, it looks really good for FDJ, but we get a little tell here coming through this left-hand corner. Maybe Askey should have let the wheel go through the corner, you know, micro things. Sheehan's gapped Johannesson on that climb. And Johannesson's, you know, a good climber, punchy guy. So Sheehan already closing down the gap after he'd been working, gapping Johannesson. We're getting a first indicator of just how strong this 23-year-old American who's been on the NCL and American circuit is top fived almost every American race he's done this year. The problem is right now, who's going to pull? Askey's just got caught. Legax just attacked. The other three riders are kind of in the mode of, I don't want to help you. You just attacked us, Legak, after we pulled you across to Askey. So it's very important that Legak and Askey just pull for two, three minutes while those guys recover. And they have to. The team that attacked with the numbers has to pull and then the other guys recover, start to roll through. Because if they didn't do that, the FDJ guys very quickly... I think they would have been caught as well with, I don't know what the IPT rider was doing there, and the other guys are on the radio like, we got Sheehan Head, chill out. So Kofidis Arkea and just Dylan Van Bala to chase down 17 seconds. It didn't really come under that until the last kilometer where there was a bit of finessing, and FDJ decide to go for the sprint with Askew, who's been in the breakaway, who's not pulling, he's skipping all his turns, Legax pulling strongly. Was this the right thing to do, or should Askew have rolled through, and then they used the numbers two in the group later? I'm not really sure of the answer, but here's another tell. You got to see that little gap? These are small things. It might not mean anything. It might just have been asleep, but Johansson's just got a little gap the wheel of Del Bove. Whereas when you roll just through, you see Sheehan, he's over up. He can't wait to get through and rip a turn. He's already, he wants to go quicker. You can just see he's clearly feeling really, really good. Um, maybe that was just different timing. But then it's also, you know, when he's pulling on the front, barely anyone can hold the wheel. No one can roll over. Everyone's fully strung out. You see he flicks Legak through. Legak doesn't move for one, two beats. And it's like, okay, we'll pull through because they're going for ASCII. So Sheen was the strongest in this group. And Del Bove, who was, he had to skip a turn when Sheen was pulling, still pulled through afterwards. So he wasn't just fully skipping. Coming to the last, uh, the straight into the finish. And I think... Yeah, did they, they didn't have much of a margin to the group behind. So I think FTJ do the right thing here with Legak attacking. I think that is the right thing. But Askey has to take Sheen's wheel. He can't let Del Bove take uh, the wheel of Sheen. He's got to be further up in the group because Legak's going to lead it out. He's just sacrificing himself. And then you've got the two other favorites. You don't want to be behind. No offense to the San Michel Albert, right? Del Bove, he was very strong, but... You know, there's a, he's not the, the favorite from this group in the sprint. It's either Johannesson or, or Sheehan. Maybe they didn't know who Sheehan was. So I think Askey's just got to take that wheel of Sheehan to be further up in the group. He's still going to get a draft from the two ahead. And, you know, Legak is leading out. He did have the opportunity to move up. I don't think it mattered too much because Del Bove actually drags him in to Sheehan's wheel. And he takes Sheehan's wheel fine. He's able to uh, fend off Johannesson. He's quicker than Johannesson. But Sheehan gets that lead out from Del Bove. Was in perfect position in the group. Jumped on that. And I don't think it mattered anyway. He was just too strong. The strongest of the group, strongest in the sprint, initiated that move with the gack and the wheel and a huge win for the 23-year-old American who I think was supposed to ride for in the NCL next year. I don't think so, buddy. Off to World Tour or at least a full pro contract with Israel Premier Tech next year and a big win for them. And I'm excited to see what he can do in the Classics next year. This wasn't a fluke performance where he just got lucky. He was really, really good, Sheehan. There were some good riders in this race. There was Yumbo who won every Dot Pro or World Tour one day classic except the Monuments this year with Laporte. He just won the Euros. So I was really, really impressed with this. Uh, he ain't a boy. He's a man. He was a man, Riley Sheehan. Can't wait to see it next year. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you with the recap of, I don't know what. Let me know what you want to see in the rest of the off-season. Maybe I'll have to take a look back at some of the other races this year. Pull out a few things I enjoyed. Until then, ciao.